WBZ is committed to keeping an eye on our earth and on this Indigenous Peoples Day. Sarah, I know you're talking about the plants that Indigenous people have been collecting now for generations. There are hundreds of native plants right in our own backyard that are valuable sources of food, medicine, and even material. But climate change is threatening their existence and the communities that depend on them. Foraging is the art of collecting wild food sources. Like those enormous things that look like old green tennis balls. Yes. Those are black walnuts. One that clearly takes practice. All right, so let's, oh, right there, right where you stepped on. At the edge of Waltham Fields Community Farm, there are dozens of edible plants and weeds that naturalist Russ Cohen show me growing wild. Here we go. Oh. So the black cherry is right here. But over time, our climate has changed, and so does the availability of some native plants. For example, uh, black cherries and elderberries, species that I usually would tell people traditionally go look for them the first week of September, I'm now seeing them ripe the last week of August. Russ has been identifying and documenting plants for five decades and has witnessed the impacts of climate change. Yes, I am seeing drier, dry periods and wetter, wet periods. If there is a significant long-term shift in patterns, you know, some species will cope better than other ones. A heartbreaking reality for some communities that depend and live off the land. It makes me very emotional, to be honest. Linda Black Elk is usually happy and upbeat on social media when she talks about foraging local plants in unusual places, but tells me climate change is making it harder. I've seen a lot of plants that my uh, husband's family considers to be so important and so sacred. I have seen them getting less frequent and less frequent as time goes on. I have to travel much further to get a good supply of them to feed my family. She believes every plant has a purpose and food is medicine, even the weeds growing in your yard. The entire dandelion is medicinal. Uh, there are amazing clinical trials on the uses of dandelion root in treating various types of cancer and treating diabetes. Uh, dandelions are amazing and I, you know, it's, it's wild to me to see people spray them in their lawn and then go to a large grocery store chain to buy boxes of organic dandelion root tea. <laughs> Do you think medicinal plants can survive climate change? If we take some action now, I feel like um, there's still hope. Hopeful that in time, people will connect better to the land, like indigenous communities. That's why she also shares through social media recipes and how to find hundreds of edible and medicinal plants growing where you'd least expect it. That's what's really important to me, even stuff that grows out of the cracks of the sidewalk that people walk over every day and don't don't really pay attention to, you know. Uh, most of those are really valuable um, food and medicine. It's, I mean, it's, she's incredible and she really wants us to kind of look at those weeds and plants as if they were relatives because you can't ignore them just like you can't ignore climate change. Well, and they serve so many purposes that you don't even think about in your day to day. Plus the perspective, we tend to think of animals first and not how habitats of plants get affected by climate change. So true.